Hello everyone! Today I want to share a progress video with you. Like many aerialists, the pandemic has meant that I haven't been able to go to the studio. And to be honest, after a few months of lockdown, I gave up trying to stay in aerial shape, or frankly, any shape at all. I knew I would be starting from zero when I was able to go back to the studio, and this was a little daunting, because I built up my strength, pain tolerance, and aerial skills over several years. I didn't and I still don't know how long it will take to get back to the same level I was pre-pandemic. But I know a lot of us are in this situation, so I wanted to share my experience so far. I'm focusing on my progress with aerial conditioning exercises as those are the most comparable from week to week. In this video, you'll see eight exercises over seven weeks and the videos are sped up to two times the speed so this doesn't end up being a 30 minute video, but you can still see the integrity of the exercises. So far, you've been watching shoulder shrugs and hangs. There isn't a big change you can see for this category of exercises, but I do feel a lot more confident in these movements. I always start my warm-ups with shoulder shrugs and hangs because it's a great way to warm up the shoulders and hands. I can't think of an aerial class that I've attended that hasn't included these in the warm-up, so it truly is a classic. During these exercises, I focus on keeping my rib cage closed and my movements slow and smooth. Like I mentioned in my 7 Aerial Dance Critiques Explained video that I'll link up above, to keep my ribs closed, I focus on engaging my upper abs. There are so many variations for hangs, and the ones you've seen me do are just the beginning. Next up, we have knee hangs and butt kicks, more classic exercises. For butt kicks, I focus on keeping my hips pushed forward and my rib cage closed so that my hamstrings have to work to move my heels. If you bend at the hips, you'll have a greater range of motion, but the exercise won't be as effective. Some studios include a similar warm up from a double knee hang where the back is arched and there's a bend at the hips. It's a similar shape used for a heel hang, but the knees are on the bar rather than the heels. In that exercise, you use your hamstrings to pull your butt closer to your heels. The version I'm doing is the opposite because I'm pulling my heels to my butt while actively pushing my hips forward. This should be a relatively small motion. As my hamstrings get stronger, I'm working on taking a leg off to transition to a single knee hang. My goal is to be able to bring my legs straight to the front, the side, then the back, and then reverse that path. The most difficult location is to the front as the weight of the leg wants to pull you off the bar. So if you aren't confident you can stay on the hoop, ask for a spot. This is one of the easiest exercises to spot as it just requires a hand above the foot at bar level. If you don't have an at-home setup but you still want to work on your hamstrings, Nordic curls are a great exercise to try. Next up, we have pike rows. Pike rows are also very common in aerial hoop warm-ups. You might be seeing a pattern here. Pike rows are tricky because knowing the proper form and being able to execute them with proper form are wildly different things. If I'm not strong enough to do a proper row, but I'm thinking about pulling up to the bar, it's easy to open up the pike instead of pulling with the arms. This is common for beginners who are still building strength, so I know I'm not the only one who struggles with this. I really have to focus on keeping my pike compressed while training these. You can see that over time I'm relying more on my arms and cheating less by opening up the pike. Another thing I think about is the direction of the elbows. They should be nice and tight to the body so the elbows are in line with the wrists. I don't want my elbows to go out to the sides. This might sound obvious, but straddle up negatives are a way to train straddle ups. The holy grail is of course straight arm, straight leg inverts, but there are many progressions in between. For this exercise, I always start by dropping my hips as low as I can control, and then I bring them back up to stack on top of my shoulders. I repeat that three to four times, then I try for a controlled full negative. 
As you've seen, I started with bent arm straight leg negatives and worked my way up to straight arm straight leg negatives. I still lose control of the negative when my legs get close to 90 degrees, so I'm not ready to move on to training inverts. Flower is one of my favorite drills. It combines posterior chain strength, coordination, and balance all in one. The key to a successful flower is the roll up. It starts with the mid back initiating the movement, then each vertebrae is drawn into alignment until the head comes up. The goal is to exit with a roll down initiated by tucking the chin. It looks easy, but there are a lot of ways to throw off the precarious balance. I've seen it taught a few different ways, but I like to try to keep my legs in place while I lift and lower my torso. This method allows you to set the position of the bar before you start to lift. The ideal is to position the bar right below your hip bones and keep it there. If your weight is too much towards your feet, the bar can slide over your hip bones, which isn't pleasant. One circus training center I went to required the feet to be together for the drill, and it makes it so much harder, so that's what I practice. It's easier to balance with your legs apart, but since conditioning drills help with learning new skills, I want to build good habits. Are flowers part of your regular warm-up? What do you find difficult about them? Let me know in the comments. Ah, pull-ups. It took me a long time to get my pull-ups for the first time, so I didn't have high hopes for getting them back quickly. I started with simple negatives, then incorporated drills for the top of the pull-up range, which I find easier. To my surprise, I ended up getting a rough pull-up back in about four weeks. This enforces my suspicion that my inability to do pull-ups during my first year of aerial was mostly mental. That being said, I think I got the strength from my pull-ups from training on the Lyra in general, rather than the few pull-up drills I was doing during my warm-ups. Every controlled mount and dismount is essentially a pull-up drill, which is one of the many reasons that sloppy mounts and dismounts hurt your progress. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I don't like elbow hangs, which is why I have to build them into my warm-ups. Single elbow hangs require enough shoulder strength to support the body, but also a lot of pain tolerance, at least at first. The inside of the elbow is just cringe for me, but it does get better. There are a lot of opportunities for beautiful elbow hangs. If you follow Circle Cirque on Insta, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I think it's worth it to work through the discomfort.
Single hip hangs are in a similar category to single elbow hangs, but I don't hate them as much. I love the shapes and transitions that are based on a single hip hang, and I end up in them a lot when I'm freestyling. I will admit that if I'm positioned a little off, it can feel like torture. If you enjoyed this progress video, please give it a big thumbs up, and if you want to see more aerial videos, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching!